Sweet. All right. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Victory Lap Show here with myself, Chad Ferry. Tyler Corbett. And our special guest today. Riley Bertram. Yep. Perfect. So we got the lineup for today. Um, Riley, go ahead and give us some background on yourself. Yeah. Uh, to start, it's an honor to be here. I'm happy you guys were able to, to get me on. I was happy I was able to get here. But um, yeah, so I'm from Zionsville, Indiana. Uh, I did my undergrad at the University of Michigan. And then I am playing my fifth year here with you guys and with the baseball team for Clemson University. Sweet. All right. So you spent four years with Beckett already. Um, has he always been just this intense, this this hands-on, this just full force of energy all the time? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's that's kind of his, his standard he puts himself to in terms of having that high energy every single day. Um, I'd say the discipline point, uh, you know, coming to Clemson and trying to – turn the program and, you know, do it his way. The discipline part is, uh, is probably a little bit more currently, you know, trying to get all the players to buy in and change stuff um, here at Clemson. So that part is a little bit, a little bit more right now, but for the most part, the energy and all that, I mean, that's, that's just coach back. Right Speaking on the energy, one of the funny things about that is last night during the walk on tryouts, Who's either shagging fly balls with the guys that are out there? Yeah. I thought that was sweet. Yeah. It's 100 miles an hour, too. Yeah, it's Good about um, every opportunity he gets whenever the other team's watching, you know, uh, during yes. some SP, some some batting practice, he'll be out there laying out. Full, really? full, layout, full layout at the shortstop position, maybe the six-hole layout. Wow. And then if it's hit slow enough, he'll try to barehand it. I know if... I know uh, we were doing base running the other day, and, and I was the last guy in the group to base run, and, and uh, he's he's like got it, my hand, his hand on my hip right behind me, and as soon as I take off, he just raced me to second base. So I mean, it's just like nonstop, just yeah, yeah. It's the um, he's full of energy. He he wants he's not gonna not have the energy and then expect it from you guys. Mm-hmm. So and that's and that's one thing I've always respect about him. You know, he'll he'll do whatever he asks you to do or he has done what he will ask us to do. So it's always been a positive I think. Yeah. That makes it a whole lot better too. Yeah. Like when you have a you know somebody who knows the ropes, yeah. you know, like he does, is willing to <clears throat> get down and dirty with that kind of stuff. Um it's a whole lot better. So meeting Jack Leggett, yeah. uh you've got to interact with him a good bit. Uh can you see where a lot of the stuff that Backett gets and, and the way he is? Do you think it it resembles his time here at Clemson twenty years ago with with being under uh, Jack for that little time? Yeah, um, I mean, when I first got here, to see that coaching staff be assembled was pretty pretty remarkable. To see Coach Leggett and then to really learn more about him mm-hmm. and his past and the schools that he was at and the the legacy that he holds here and all his other schools. So that was, that's awesome for really me just to go to the field each day and see coach Leggett, see coach Backett who I was with and just see all these awesome coaches that I believe are, you know, have a legacy and, you know, hearing coach Leggett each day and he's had the opportunity to speak in front of the team a couple times now. I definitely have see some things um, that EB is or Backett has taken from him um, over the course of, you know, how Coach Leggett coaches. Uh, I think it's more of like a he picks what he wants maybe, and then he's changed a few things, obviously, you know, with the some culture stuff. But for the most part, the the baseline stuff, I mean, that's the, that's the core, that's the root, and that's what all that coaching tree believes is a winning culture. And that's kind of how they go about things, and it's all about the right things. So, What are some similarities you've seen? Uh, I mean, the first thing is just energy. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, Jack's just as soon as he wakes up in the morning, he's he's hundred yeah. percent. He's just he's going, and I think we talked last last week about how he he's running everywhere and how he's that heartbeat yeah. that heartbeat's always pumping. Uh, yeah. Um, and I think it's 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 hurting him a little bit that he can't be as hands on as he wants to be. Yeah. Um, just because of the restrictions with coaching and stuff like that. But I see that biting at him. 
It is. He, he, <laughs> I think he said it was like a like a horse stuck in a stable. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he was talking about. But he but, shares pieces and parts sometimes, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, okay, that that makes sense. We had a little yes. a little seven minutes with seven the other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He told us some stories. It's good. Um. So you you've been to <laughs> Omaha. You've won. You've won on our backage. Um. Let's just talk about Omaha a little bit. Tell me about that experience. Tell me about Supers. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, to start, I was a freshman on that team. Um, not, to, not to take anything away from my experience, um, but that team I was a part of was a, was a really good baseball team. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, some people say it was a Cinderella story, but you look back and there's a lot of good players on that team, um, you know, from infield to the outfield position and then three really good starting pitching, and that's kind of how Coach Beckage likes to – have you know his his team? He wants some really good starting pitching with some some speed and power in the lineup, which I see a lot of resemblance with this team we have this year. But um, yeah, in terms of that team, it was just fun to be a part of it. Really, uh, as a freshman on the team, um, it was more of a an energy giver. You know, that was more of my role, and I and I had some times where I was able to get in the game here and there. Got a couple couple flashes in Omaha here and there but nothing you know as a as a huge role but that was my favorite part about that team is they never they never made me think that I wasn't a big role on the team and, and I was able to go you know the supers the regional the Omaha and I was I was with them the whole time and you know it was still probably one of the best experiences I've had where was the super that year I was at UCLA. UCLA, yeah, yeah that's pretty the sweet. Number one, number one team in the nation that year. How was UCLA? Like, if you had so to say, I looked at all the supers that year, and I think that was probably the best place to play because yeah. the fan base there, it's not, it's not Texas Tech, yeah. it's not, it's not an SEC school. So it was like you know, out in California, if you ever played at UCLA, it's kind of hidden away the field. I mean, it's a beautiful field, but. I thought it was a perfect place to play because we yeah. travel well in California. Uh, a lot of a lot of Michigan alumni are from the California area, and so we I think we matched their their fan base really. And so wow. it was a pretty even even set. But Dang. that's one place I I've, I've never even <coughs> seen UCLA. Mm -hmm. yeah. there, there were talks my freshman year. We ended up going to the Ole Miss regional. There were talks that we would end up was either UCLA or. Like Oregon State, or Oregon something. State. It was Two one of those West. way, way West far. West. You know, yeah. That's real far from here. Yes. 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 Jackie Robinson Field. That's, That's right. UCLA. Yeah. Yep. Very hmm. nice field. All right, Riley. So you've uh, our uh, our volunteer assistant uh, Griffin Mazer. Mm. You've got an opportunity to play with him, and and now he's kind of transitioned from like that GA or not GA role, but he's our volley now. What kind of relationship do you have with him and, and just talk about what kind of guy he is? Yeah. I mean, out of the whole staff, obviously, I love them all, but I'm, I'm super excited for Griffin Mazer. Um, yeah. I had the opportunity to play with him my junior year. He was our catcher. Still probably one of the best catchers I've ever played with defensively. Um, and just to see him come to Michigan for one year, gain the respect from the coaching staff, play one year pro ball, and then the coaching staff wants him back right away. I mean, he was just that – they knew right from the start that he was going to be a good coach. He will be a good coach, and I'm just I'm pumped for Mazer to be in the role he's at, and he's crushing it, I think, right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, in terms of our relationship, it's good to have him here just because I played with him. And, you know, you always want a volunteer that you can talk to. Yeah. You, you don't want a volley that's, you know, you say something to the volley and then – you know, that immediately gets back to the coach. Like, you, you want that relationship side, and I think he does a really good job of communicating mm -hmm. through all. He does. And having that personal relationship with the players where you can talk to, let a couple things out, and then it's, it's right back to the right back to game time. Yeah. So, no, I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy for Coach Mason. That's one thing we were saying last week. He's like a liaison. Yeah, he's, he's uh, pretty. Yeah, he's he's kind of just in between, and, and mm -hmm. he's, a, he's, he's great to talk to. Um, He's a good dude. Too. Like yesterday, not that I was, I don't want to say slacking, but I was in the cages. I was knocking some balls out of the batting box before I stepped in to swing because I didn't obviously want to step on the ball when I swung. But I guess I didn't have the uh, enthusiasm yeah. behind it where I wasn't really doing it with, you know, 
speed, I guess. Mm-hmm. He's like, let's go, let's go. I was like, yeah. God, all right, sorry, sorry. So he, he can call you out, you can mm-hmm. talk to him. Exactly. That's a good mix to have in a yeah. coach. He's, he's, not, he's not afraid to, 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 to tell you what you need to hear. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Which, yeah, I mean, he's... Which, I thought it was hilarious yesterday. Um, I was in a different group than you guys. Um, and uh, he had that. He started to, he's starting to bring that, that coach baggage energy. And he got on somebody for kind of slacking <laughs> on the machine cage. Someone's like, you going to do it. He walked in there five barrels in a row. Five <laughs> barrels in a row. It was a hard slider. It was a hard slider. That was, yeah. He said, give me the bat. Five girls in a row went back, started flipping to the other kids. <laughs> I walked in the cage the other day and saw EB switch hitting back and forth. That was funny. Yeah, back and forth was just taking hacks and just catching barrels both from both yeah. sides. That he does funny. that a lot, doesn't he? Yeah, he likes going and diving in the infield and taking hacks in the, in the cages. When I saw him yesterday out there in the outfield just running down balls, <laughs> like just full speed, I was like, yeah. dang, that's pretty sweet. Okay, so uh, so you you came from Michigan. How was the transition from? Did you think you were done, or like what was the deal with that? Or did you want to grad transfer somebody I mean, somewhere else? Or or uh, how that like little two or three months span go? Yeah, it was um, it was wild, quick two months. Uh, to be honest with you guys, um, I I was going to play another year, and I was going to do it with Coach Beckett. Uh, my plan was, I mean, he was talking to us, and everyone had that talk, and there was talk in the air, like, is he going to go to Clemson? Uh, we saw some, you know, reports and stuff like that. But, you know, my my I anticipated probably playing another year at Michigan under Coach Backage. And, you know, the moment that the news came out, you know, him and I had a conversation um, after I entered the portal. Um, but... And, you know, he asked me to come with him uh, and Willie Weiss. And I didn't even really hesitate, to be honest. Uh, it, it wasn't so much where he was going. I'm happy that I'm here. I love Clemson so far. Um, but it was it was honestly wherever Coach Backage was going. If he, if he wanted me to join him, I was going to go. You know, I did my first four years with him. I was going to do my fifth. And that just so. says a lot about him and the relationships yeah. he mm-hmm. builds and, and the trust he brings. Um, which I'm so excited for, like, the seniors on this team to, as the season goes on and you guys start to develop those relationships, like, it's 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 awesome. It's fun to have, too. That's a good thing to, like, have, too. Or it's, it's like a, uh, a bright outlook for the program when you have somebody who's that, you know, invested in their head coach, like you, mm-hmm. for the example, to follow down to Clemson from Michigan. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, you know, bright outlook for years yeah. to come, I guess, you know. Kids buying into that more. Yeah, and I hope that that sends a message really to the yeah. guys on the team that you know, yeah, uh, I didn't hesitate. Um, I, was, I, I wanted to I wanted to play for that staff, and not yeah. only Coach Backage but Coach Schnabel. Yeah. Um, huge fan of Coach Schnabel. He's been my infield coach for four years, and yeah. and my hitting coach. So you know, I have a, a lot to a lot of respect for both of those guys, um, and then all the other coaches we've had in the past, but. Those two coming here, I thought it was a no-brainer, especially with Clemson baseball being what it is. Um, yeah, when I had that that opportunity, I immediately no hesitation. Are you uh, are you looking forward to playing in some some warmer weather? <laughs> yeah, except for this hurricane we got going on. <laughs> uh, first hurricane. Yeah, first first hurricane I've ever been a part of. Hopefully it gets down to a. Oh, hopefully it is a hurricane when it gets here, but it'll probably just be a tropical storm. I don't think it's going to be too bad. Yeah. No. Yeah. Fortunately. But just to say I've been in a hurricane. But the, uh, the, the weather in general is going to be – that's going to be a huge upgrade. And I'm really excited about the fans. Yeah. You know, just the atmosphere. You know, you get you go to a midweek in, in Ann Arbor in March, and you've got five to 15 fans potentially. Yeah. I was going to ask, how, what, on average, let's say, like, you're playing <coughs> – let's say you're playing Ohio State. Mm-hmm. How many fans would you say Friday night Ann Arbor yeah. you're gonna have? If you had to I'd guess. say the, the it all depend on the weather. It really did. Let's say good so, weather. Yeah, good weather. Sunday afternoon, we 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 get a, a few thousand. You know, we okay. we get a maybe two thousand, twenty five hundred. But those were rare. Those were rare. It had to be nice, sunny, good opponent. You know, for the most part, there just wasn't a lot of 
advertising to come to the game, you know, and yeah. a lot of, uh, you know, that made people really want to come. Um, but the I think we got hurt the most because that year after Omaha, we came back and then it was COVID. And we never got one home game. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was going to be a good year for the program to start to get more fans and get a little bit more buy-in. But COVID kind of shot us there. But, you know, for the most part, you know, it, 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 it won't compare to... I was about to say, you're going to love it here, though. Yeah, well, it won't compare. Yeah, and like being in the cold, the first almost full month of the season is away games for you guys, right? Mm-hmm. Y'all mm-hmm. come down that's south. A, that's a huge change as well coming here. Um, seeing the schedule is going to be at home for... Most of the preseason, like almost right? 35, 40 games. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a it's lot. Wild. That's exciting. It's talking about like the f- fans at Michigan and whatnot. This reminds me of Boston College. Like a lot of the northern schools that we've seen, so or at least like Pittsburgh, Notre Dame, Pittsburgh, Notre Dame, Boston College. I'm trying to think where else up north we played. You, um, you ever see that video of the West Virginia coach? <laughs> oh, you're talking about playing in the summer. Playing the summer. Well, he just said, "Why, why, why would anyone want to come?" To a game yeah, when it was yeah. thirty, it was like thirty-five at their game, and it was sleeting. <laughs> That's how it was for Pitt and Notre Dame. Pitt, that was a nightmare. And God. He said, "I'm not coming." He goes, "I'm not going to my game." Straight up said that. I mean, it, truthfully, yeah, no. And with the weather, and all the stuff you had to do with, I think Beckett just loves that kind of stuff. Like today, we'll be practicing or training, um, doing our scrimmage in the hurricane, the hurricane. in the rain. Um, as long as it's not absolutely un- <laughs> yeah. like unplayable, we're going to be playing. And that mentality right there, I think, will win us two to four games this upcoming season. Just being able to, just being able to embrace it and feed off of it, and know that we've trained. Yeah. Like it, it's it's crazy. He probably takes it a little bit to the next level, <laughs> but you know, if he takes it up here, then maybe we take it right there, and then. You know, we're still training over the over the level of competition. So. And well, maybe a few games in February, but but other than other than some cold streaks here, it really, really won't go to any places cold. We go to Boston College in May, which it will be fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, so hopefully, I mean, maybe we will, but maybe it'll be an advantage for us. We'll we'll see. But but um, yeah, we ever get a rainy day? We ever get a rainy day? That's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Where do we play last year? Where it was dumping. It was somewhere we played. It was poured and poured. Um, oh, Virginia. Was Virginia. Was, that, yeah. God, that was brutal. Yep, it was raining while we were playing the whole game. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, all right, so just tell us tell us about how you like Clemson so far. What, what have you – we've been playing some golf. We've yeah. Been, we've been yeah. – um, you're a fellow fifth year, so you don't have class. Yeah, the class is a little limited. Uh, it's yeah. been nice. Uh, Good way to put it. Got some, you know, some asynchronous courses, but you know, for the for the most part, um, being here at Clemson, it's been awesome. Um, the the players on the team, you know, it is it's nice having. We have a lot of newcomers, but we also have a lot of older guys. We have a lot of fifth years and with similar schedules to me. And like you, you two, um, Blackwell, you know, more guys. Obviously, the Willie Weiss who came in with me. So it's easy to hang out with you guys and, you know, develop friendships quickly, playing golf, hanging out, having fires like you guys do, um, and doing all that stuff. So that's that's been nice and really welcoming to, to me and Willie. And we've we've loved every second of it so far. I really enjoy the you know, the small the the not the bubble, but you know, how small the town is. Yeah. That mm-hmm. you, once you get into Clemson you know you're in Clemson. You're like in Clemson. It's there, and I and I've I've grown to love that. So I think it's really cool, and it's kind of like a pride thing. Yeah, and I, one of the thing, one of the interesting things about us, like our schedules and, and our situations are, um, especially with EB and now um, with Beckett, just the way the program is is trending. Um, I think with our amount of free time, I think it gives us a great opportunity to to kind of make sure everybody's doing good, make sure everybody's developing those relationships, everybody's taking the time to to kind of just continue to grow with each other yeah. um i think that's one thing i've, I've kind of gotten to love is yeah. uh is being able to spend time with a lot of the younger guys and then you guys um we just have a lot of time on our hands yeah that we can we can make the most of i think that's a really good thing um with, with our situation <clears throat> yeah i know one thing like in years past i had 
not to say I neglected the younger guys, but it took me a while to actually get to know something mm -hmm. about all the freshmen. Yeah. And now I know every single one of them. I know where they're from. And not that, that, that obviously that's very surface level, but that's still farther ahead than what I was yeah. like last year or the year before. I mean, I didn't, it took me, I don't want to, I don't want to say too long, but it took me a while to get yeah. to know everybody. It took a lot of, you know, it sounds bad, but you just don't think about those little yeah. things and those little things add up. I guess there are no little things, yeah. but. No, you're right. I mean, I remember yeah. my freshman year, I was like, that's, that's kind of crazy. But then you, you start playing, you get out there on the field with the team you got a big moment, like, you, if you don't know the player next to you very well at all, like, how, I just, it makes sense, it clicked in my head, I was like, like you gotta, you gotta have one of your good friends next to you, yeah. you gotta know them, you gotta know them mm -hmm. off the field, know, know everything about them, and trust them, right. and back to that trust, so. That was one thing, I had to, I was telling you earlier, speaking to Brad Miller, mm -hmm. and I was asking him, like, what, made his team <clears throat> successful here when he was they played Alabama. I remember in 2010, they played Alabama, Super Regional. He went off. He was a four for five. That team was really, really good. Last team we go to Omaha. And I asked, you know, what made that team so successful? And he said that core of guys that were just so close-knit mm -hmm. and so tight, he said it was just like when somebody – like. I don't want to say somebody, but when, you're, when your boys steps up to the plate, you know they're going to come through. Yeah. Like you have that confidence because you know them, you've seen the work, you know, it's not just another player yeah. coming up to bat. Yeah. So that's something pretty cool too. We, uh, we finished up our mental toughness Wednesdays for a while. Um, you've got plenty of, plenty of runs under your belt. Was it any easier here than it was in Michigan or – or um, did the weather help at all, or are you used to it, or what? The weather, the weather did help. The weather did help. I thought the most recent one we did, it was pretty cold. It was out there. I think it was getting close to the 40s, 50, around it was there. It was 45 when oh, we were running. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a good test. Um, yeah. But the weather helped in terms of being warmer. But, dude, I, I love those things. Like, I, I take pride in those things. Um, <laughs> and you have to, because if you don't care about I, it, then... That's, then it's miserable. <clears throat> yeah, it's a little you know, three hundred meters on track, and uh, I just I, I take pride in not missing them. Um, and I think I mean look what happened last last week. I mean that was I thought one of our best moments we've had as a team. It was yeah, hundred um, percent. And I think it, it brings people together in a in a weird way, and it works. <laughs> and I've just seen teams grow quickly. Yeah, with one round of those. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and like the the vulnerability that's like some guys struggle with it, obviously, just because just because of the nature of it. Yeah. Um, and I think that just being able to, to kind of get behind them and, and it's just it's just something you have to do with the team. Yeah, it definitely builds camaraderie. It also helps. You, you talk about like team building as a team. It also helps certain individuals find that they can mm -hmm. go one more. And they yeah. can you know finish in under sixty seconds. Like I mean that's. It's kind of crazy because, I mean, after the first time we did it, four was rough Yeah. for me. Yeah, the right? first one was bad. And then what did we do last time? Six. Six. Yeah, and that wasn't, <clears throat> it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, but, but you keep finding that extra one. Yeah, exactly. You, it's, you can get there. It's crazy. I think it's the coolest thing. Like, I, yeah. I do love them. I mean, besides the fact that it's in six in the morning. Uh, yeah. But, but that's course. that's part of the mental toughness of it. And, you know, I you've seen some of these freshmen already. Like, mm -hmm. they... They were barely making it through four, and then they found a way to barely make it through five. And then yeah. they th you think they have no more in the tank, and then you, you know, the upperclassmen. You know, I know you guys. Yeah. You guys did a good job, and just find them to motivate them to find what's what's really in there. And I think that's. I mean, I, I love mm -hmm. those things. I love the three hundred. It's. Uh, I read something the other day. There was a. It was a, like a Harvard professor, um, and it's called the Hope Experiment. It. Uh, they put this like group of rats in like a big yeah. tub of water and just see it like they tread they tread water for 15 minutes and they drowned mm -hmm. and then they did the next group they put a group of rats in there um, right before they drowned they took them out dried them off fed them and then put them back in and they swam for 47 straight hours and that's like the whole like idea of that is like once they realize that it's not that bad like yeah. they could like there's some light on the other side of it yeah. they just it's just full out. They did. 
And I think that's one of the things, like, you, you get done with four, like, this isn't that bad. You might as well just do another mm-hmm. one. You might as well just do another one. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think that that's one thing that's really interesting is, is every week it seems to get a little easier when it's really just getting a little harder. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. 100%. It's, just, it's also, like, that energy, too. That it feels yeah. like when you start getting to five, six, it's like you're – all right, this last one was burning out. Let's yeah. see how fast I can run on this yeah. one. Yeah. You know, and even it's just it's crazy to think, you know, something like that can really and obviously push you to your limits, but bring everybody yeah. to a different level. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. It was, it was uh, last Wednesday morning. It was uh, it was a cool thing to watch. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it and it was it was a challenge obviously, but it was awesome, I thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll talk about some more casual stuff. Um what are some good places you've eaten in Clemson? What's, what's your favorite thing you've done so far? My favorite thing I've done so far? I love golf. I do. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> but that's, I mean, you can play golf anywhere. Yeah. Right? Um, and I haven't, I haven't gotten out on the course too often, but here and there, you know, I went with you. In general, uh, Clemson, I, I do a couple campus walks mm-hmm. um, just because I'm not in courses right now. Or on campus in class and doing that and really seeing the campus and going out there to I don't know whatever it is a Starbucks in the middle of the campus um, I've enjoyed those a lot uh, just kind of being back in that college atmosphere a little bit but it's a good question um, you ever had a burger from Backstreets? I have <laughs> I have had a burger from Backstreets couldn't can't beat it you know what burger I thought was also really good. Loose change. Loose yeah, change. Had had a really good one. Best burger. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was caught up. Someone mentioned it, and I was like, "No way!" It's a yeah. taco place, something like that. Yeah, and I think as soon as uh, Backage and Snowden and got here, they were taking some recruits around, and I think they asked us where to go, and we we sent them to Loose Change to get a burger. Yeah, Loose Change. <laughs> uh, That's the way to go. Hundred percent. Loose Change burger. Um, I did try Evolve. What do you guys got on Evolve? Depends on what you get. Okay. I like it. I, I enjoyed it. It was, a, it was a different little mix up based on the, the places I was eating. It's also yeah. cool coming here. Um, we have we've never seen a Bojangles. I've never seen <laughs> a, I've never seen a cookout. So those are staples. Have you gotten cookout yet? I still haven't. What? Yeah. Wow. Still, still no cookout. That's like um, a staple of the South. Man. I know. So all those Jeez. all these kind of fast. It's more so the fast food places I'd say. I've just never even seen them. Uh, speaking of, like, let's just say, uh, completely different, but you ever been part of a college game day? I have. Um, you know, that, <laughs> that, the game, you know, the Ohio State-Michigan game, they, they'll tend to go there for Oh, Saturdays. that's right, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Um, but I've never been to one. Yeah. So I'm going this Saturday. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go out there. See Herb Street, do it all. They actually can't. It's a couple of years ago. They were. It was like Kirk Herb Street, uh, Chris Fowler. I think so. All those guys. They came to the batting cages. Really? When they, yeah, we. They had. I think it was a Friday practice. They were all in town, and we were taking BP. And then all of a sudden, all those guys came in with Brad Owens. I would not be surprised if we see them today. Mm. That would be awesome. Cause they, I mean they gotta be in town. They gotta be with they, the weather. They'll, they'll be here today. Yeah, they yeah. gotta be here. They're probably looking for something to do. Yeah, we might see them. Come over to the lair. We might see them. That's right. The lair. You hang out in the bunker. How about that? What do you guys got on that? The, share, the names. Let's share our names of the facilities. Yeah, that's something we were talking about last time. Just like the new <clears throat> names and whatnot. I'm gonna be so. honest with you. I think so. Our cages are cages. the tiger lair. Tiger lair. And our players' facility is the Tiger Ambush. Okay. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think they should be. Split. I think they were prematurely. Named. I think yeah. Yeah. Because we gave a name to the the layer first. Because we got access. To access it. to and it. And that first. was the next best name. Yeah. I I. Also, I just for clarification, because I know I didn't know, but a Tiger Ambush is a group of tigers. A group of tigers. So a streak and an ambush. So whenever we're doing something together as a team yeah. or in groups. Or tiger streaks, but the tiger ambush is players' facility. Yeah, so. and yeah, and ambush just sounds aggressive. It sounds like 
Sounds like our like our batting practice is smash practice. Yeah. I think I th- I, yeah. But lingo is is a little bit out there, but once you once you start saying it more, you know how he says shared language becomes your mm-hmm. actions and all that. Yeah. It becomes kind of fun. Kind of takes the the whole aspect of baseball and the team part and kind of puts a little little extra twist in it. It's it a little fun. Mm-hmm. What was y'all's uh, locker room called in Michigan? The Den? That was actually called the locker room. <laughs> wow. The, well, the, the hitting facility was called the Den. The Den. Yeah. The Wolverine Den. Yeah. Uh, he got a little, maybe a little carried away with all the names this year. Yeah, he, 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 got, he got excited. Yeah. <laughs> did, uh, I mean, how are, I mean, did you have any idea about the facilities coming in or what? Did it, did it kind of open your eyes or did it, was it surprising um, or? So, Fun fact, me and Willie Weiss, just just kind of courtesy, I guess, or the respect to that that coaching staff, we committed before even touching yeah. foot on campus. Um, we didn't, we knew what it was about, but we looked up some videos and we're like, all right, this is, <laughs> yeah, like this is no brainer. I mean, this is this is um, this is the best of the best. I mean, yeah. I think he said it. I mean, there's probably you can probably count on two hands the amount of teams in college baseball that have a facility even mm. near that. Yeah. Yeah. And, 100%. I mean, it's night and day. It, it really is. The investment from the athletic department, the investment from the fans, the the overall atmosphere, the the buzz around baseball here, and the facility. I mean, it's it's night and day. It's, it's exciting. It pumps me up. Um, and yeah, I mean it's, a, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, and since we since he's gotten here, I mean, there's been improvements to it too. I mean, we've added uh, a whole like sleep recovery room. Yeah. We've added. I mean, we've got a pool table. <laughs> we've got, yeah. Um, I mean, it's just it's just all about taking pride <clears throat> yeah. in uh, what we have and, and keeping it clean and and our opportunity to to kind of just take care of it ourselves. Like the first week we were here, we scrubbed the the tiger layer, the cages, a little bit, just the walls. a little bit of All yeah, of just long process. get a little deeper appreciation yeah. for it. That place could have used the cleaning about I don't know, six years ago. I mean, it was it looked like it had. It looks good now. It does, yeah. yeah. And it was Sharp. nice and shiny. Sure. How hard was it finding a place last minute in Clemson? So the craziest thing I tried like it was last minute, and I mean I you know did I was opening up to any apartment. I uh, came with my mom, and we were going to apartments, going in, and then we luckily just found, a, I think somewhat, something fell through with the apartment, kind of right downtown, and kind of got pretty lucky, um, and we we took it right away, didn't ask any questions, took it, came in, moved in, but it was, it, if it wasn't for that, I don't know where we would have lived. <laughs> yeah, it gets chaotic. Even now, I'm sure places are already booked out for next year. Yeah, yeah. that's what they kept yeah. saying. We are. You, he goes, "Are you trying to?" Every place would answer with, "Do you want one for next year?" I'm like, "No." Yeah. One right now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was a little hectic. So uh, let's just say, what what are football game days like in the big house compared to Death Valley? They're Is somewhat similar. See, I feel like I got really lucky um, to go from football school to a football school to to have that i mean those are rare yeah really. that is true um there's only a handful of handful of programs that have that that football where you know everyone shuts down the town and so mm-hmm. it's it's been really cool to see uh you know the experience there in ann arbor but then to come here and see the it's all different though in a it way is. it's all yeah. different it's all the same in terms of that that feeling that, like I said earlier, the buzz around campus, mm-hmm. even starting on Thursday. Um, but it's all different, and it's different in weird ways. The tailgating is a little different. Um, it's it's cooler. It's cool in its own way. It's all, but I love it. Yeah, you show up to practice on a Thursday, and there's already yeah. 20 or 30 RVs sitting yeah. behind the field. Getting told I need to move Getting... my car a little bit. So yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. all right, I'll do it. Mm. Yeah, that's one thing. That's the the amount of uh, time, effort, money, energy, everything that 
everybody pours in to all athletics here at Clemson. It's pretty yeah. sweet. Even basketball games here are pretty sweet. Yeah. I mean, especially to play some at Duke, UNC, you know, programs like that. Little John will get rocking. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'm actually I'm excited for my first Clemson basketball game. They're fun. Yeah, this they uh, winter. I've heard good things about them. Hope you go into it. Yeah, 100%. All right, well, if that's all we got, we can wrap it up. Yeah, absolutely. As always, big shout out to Clemson Insider, dear old Clemson, for allowing us to have this opportunity. Um, looking forward to next week's episode. Not sure who we're bringing on yet. However, we'll make that decision soon. Uh, Riley, thank yeah. you for joining. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, appreciate it's been, you. It's been fun. Yeah. This is BT Potter. Make sure to check out the Clemson Insider's most complete football coverage. Nobody does it better. <laughs>